I want to welcome everyone here today. We are here to talk about the higher levels with God. Now, every Christian can go boldly before the throne of grace. That's Hebrews 4.16. And we go there to ask for mercy. Now that the courts of heaven have been discovered, Christians are asking, are there higher levels? How do we gain access to higher levels? What can be done there? It is God's will for his people to take their rightful place in the courts before him. The journey to the higher levels will begin with knowledge about him. When you started the free online school, you were placed at the throne of grace, which is a wonderful place to be. The attacks of the enemy are lessened so that we can grow and learn about God. As you begin growing in the knowledge of the courts, you may begin to wonder, are there different levels in the courts of heaven? What do we need to do to operate in the courts with more authority? Just like the court systems across our world, your actions will carry more weight in the courts of heaven as you come into higher positions within the army of God. If you've been called to a specific office in the body of Christ, that will be the first item that determines how much weight your actions may carry. For example, a doctor's testimony about a medical condition carries much more weight than a testimony of anyone else. A prophet is the mouthpiece of God. And for this reason, their words hold more weight than someone who isn't. There is great power in the words of anointed people. Think about what the Lord said to Jeremiah. This is Jeremiah 5.14. Why thus said the Lord God of hosts, because you speak this world, behold, I will make my word words in your mouth fire and this people would and it shall devour them as a prophet god gave jeremiah's words power that brought consequences to israel jesus said our words would move mountains when mixed with faith so how are you using the fire and the power of god in your own life now is the time to seek discernment and watch what we are releasing into our lives and the lives of others. We can ask the Lord for help with this. He is our source of wisdom, of knowledge, and power. Now, those who are anointed by God must be even more careful with what they say. Failure to do so will hinder their work in the courts of heaven. I've seen people get barred from the courts that they can't even go in anymore because they were in a position and misused words or power of God. So even if though you're not called to a specific role, such as pastor, apostle, or teacher, you can still come into a higher place within the courts. Revelation 20 verse 4, and I saw thrones and they that sat on them and judgment was given unto them. This verse shows that there are higher places in the courts. There are thrones. The original Greek word is thronos, and it's translated as a throne, but it also means a seat for an elder. When you grow in the things of God, learning and walking in his ways, the goal is to become an elder, a wise, mature child of God with the fruit of the Spirit who's able to hear from him and help direct others in the body of Christ. Could you imagine the chaos that would come if immature baby Christians with no fruit were given authority in the courts of heaven? They would be trying to attack other Christians instead of the enemy. So how do we know if we're on the right road and making progress in the right direction? Is there a way to tell if we get off the road and veer off into a ditch instead of operating in God's ways. 
Well, the Bible tells us in Luke 12, 48, but he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with a few stripes. Well, when we don't know any better, God mitigates the punishment. This sounds wonderful. If we don't know what we're doing and what we're doing wrong, the punishment will be lighter. But then let's place this in proper perspective by looking at the verse before it, Luke 12, 47. And that servant, which knew his Lord's will and prepared not himself. In other words, he's not trying to improve his walk. He's not trying to grow closer to the Lord. And neither did according to his will. He shall be beaten with many stripes. This is the other side of that coin. When you begin learning God's ways, and you should, because if you're not preparing yourself, you're also guilty, then you must do what you are learning. We are expected to implement it. You see, Jesus told his followers in Luke 6, 46, and why call me Lord, Lord, if you not do not do the things which I say? When we call Jesus our Lord, we must do what he says. It's his job to provide for us and protect us. Everybody wants to claim those promises, but he expects us to do what, we, what he tells us to do and to learn. So what does it look like when we're before the throne of grace? And we've gone the wrong way. Well, my daughter, Ashley, has allowed me to share her personal experience as an example. So Ashley began joining me for morning prayers. And she was shocked to find that out that each time she joined with me, she began to get a headache. I advised her to seek God as to what sin had opened the door for such an attack. Well, a few days later, she went to a chess tournament. Before leaving, she asked if I would pray for her, not only for wisdom and guidance from the Holy Spirit, but to have fun. So I did. And Ashley lost all but one game. And the one she beat was an eight-year-old child. That evening, she sulked, hidden away in her room. When she didn't appear several hours later, I sought her out. I said, what's wrong, sweetie? Are you upset at losing the tournament? I said, you know, many of those kids have been practicing for years. She sighed, it's more than losing. Christ was trying to teach me something at the tournament, and I got a headache. Like the ones in the morning, this was stronger, and it went away right after the tournament. I grimaced. It sounds like the enemy has access to your mind. Has the Holy Spirit shown you anything about this? She whispered, all of this kind of started when I began playing and was really focused on this game called Cinderella, Choose Your Own Adventure. I kept thinking about that game all the time, even when I wasn't playing it. I didn't have a lot of guidance from the Holy Spirit right then. I wasn't hearing anything. So I just suggested, well, that's probably the open door and left it at that. Later that night, I was crocheting a blanket and praying in the heavenly language when the Holy Spirit, Spirit connected all the dots. I went to say goodnight to Ashley and I relayed what the Holy Spirit had revealed. She had allowed recreational habits like daydreaming and video games to become an idol in her heart through her imagination. She had mind idolatry. When circumstances were against her, she turned to these preoccupations rather than to God for comfort. This created a stronghold in her mind that the enemy was using to keep the Holy Spirit from bringing her wisdom. Now, the number eight, remember the child was eight years old and she knew that, that is very important. It means, one of the meanings is judgment and destruction. The Holy Spirit was showing her that if she continues giving the enemy ground in her mind, it would only lead to judgment in the courts, which would bring destruction and loss in her life. Our counselor and friend, 
made the choice perfectly clear to Ashley. She could obey God, what he'd already been speaking to her heart, or receive consequences for her actions. This had to be her choice because she knows what is right according to God's ways and she desires to do it. I could not make this decision for her. So this is an example of true grace and mercy, how it looks to be under God's grace and mercy. Just because the enemy comes against us, it doesn't mean we're not at the throne of grace. The attack wasn't overwhelming, but it did put Ashley on notice that she wasn't implementing what she learned. If we pay close attention when difficulties, sickness, or persecution arises, the Holy Spirit will show us where we have wandered off the road and into a ditch. And how come the enemy can affect our lives? Now in Zechariah 3, verse 7, this is the Amplified Classic version. If you will walk in my ways and keep my charge, then also you shall rule my house and have charge of my forts. And I will give you access to my presence and a place to walk among these that stand here. In Luke 49, in the Amplified Classic, it says, but he who merely hears and does not practice doing my words is like a man who built a house on a ground without a foundation against which the torrents burst and immediately collapsed and fell and breaking and, and the breaking and ruin of that house was great. You see, in order to have authority in the courts, in order to be empowered there to intercede for others, we must learn to follow God's ways. In order to have charge of his courts, we have to learn his ways and do them. Jesus himself tells us we must practice what we learn or else destruction will come. In the New Testament, God shows us how to achieve this. Romans 8, 14, for as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. If we want full rights as full grown sons and daughters, children of God, we need to learn from our teacher, the Holy Spirit. With his guidance, we can become mature children of God. Then we're grown adults and we can operate in a higher place. We have to learn and do what we learn. Only then are we able to function fully in the courts of heaven. To move to higher levels where we have increased authority, one of the first things I've seen the Lord address with so many people are their words. The higher the level you are in operating with him, the more damage the enemy can do by using your words against others. See, in Revelation 12, 10, this says, For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before God night and day. Satan is the one who brings accusations against God's people. When we make accusations against our brothers, we're siding with him rather than with God. This will not only bring backlash, but it may also keep God from moving us to a higher level inside or outside of the courts. One of the first things the Holy Spirit will do is show us how to speak in agreement with the Lord instead of agreeing with the enemy. Now, highest place in the courts of heaven is something I refer to as private counsel. My family took a few days off during a celebration of in America called Independence Day. It's the 4th of July. Although I was gone from the ministry, God brought a major revelation about operating in the courts. Here's how the Lord made this revelation perfectly clear to me. My niece, let's call her Marie, and I, we lay on the bed talking quietly before we slept. I said, do you have earbuds? I asked. She nodded. You may want to use them. Now, if I'd stopped there, it would have been okay. But I continued on detailing certain situations that had caused strife between Tony and I, dealing with his aunt. Now, Marie, a teenager, commiserated with me about being kept awake all night long when we were expected to rise it early the next day. And then we settled down for the night. Now I woke up 
with allergy symptoms with very little privacy because there were no doors. <laughs> There's no insulation in the, in this nice little cabin. Um, I did not have the privacy to enter into the courts and prayer to see what was up. So I just used some over count over the counter medications thinking, Oh, this will get me through the day. I figured I'd deal with whatever it was later. Well, things quickly got worse. On the actual 4th of July, my stomach started feeling weird. By by evening, I was running to and from the bathroom. I missed the fireworks. I had to remain downstairs in the living room close to the toilet. This means I couldn't even pray. There were people in the room with me. There's nothing I could do. When I finally did get to bed, I was too exhausted to pray. I just fell over asleep. Well, the next morning, things were a little better. Best of all, though, I had some time alone in my room to pray. As I entered the courts of heaven, the Lord firmly said, private counsel. The judge said, granted. And I saw myself escorted from the courts, followed by a very large contingency of angelic hosts who flew down and walked, uh, flew down from around and, and walked with us beside us. So I've seen this council room many times, but I hadn't understood the fullness of its purpose until now. You see, the Lord escorted me to this room that was had impossibly high bookshelves on the left side, had a big wooden desk towards the back of the room. And off to the right was a fireplace with oversized leather furniture. Now the fire didn't consume the wood, so I knew this was the fire of God that Moses saw. The Lord escorted me to the fire and pointed to the chair. Sit and rest, he commanded. An angel brought a cushion for my feet and a glass with light brown liquid in it. Standing over me, the Lord said, you are not resting on what you know. I am contending for you. The Holy Spirit is your counselor. He will tell you what you need to do outside of the courts. I realized then that when we're not before the judge, we can receive this private counsel. You see, that is where we are. When we ask to be sheltered in God and ask the Holy Spirit to reveal what is against us, we are in private counsel. The Holy Spirit, he's always in the courts. He will advise us. And Jesus, he is so good. He was bringing me a vivid vision, describing exactly what happens when we seek our counselor, what he expects of us to do. Thank you, I told him, and I quickly excused myself and did as he commanded. Laying in bed, I began addressing the Holy Spirit. And I said, Holy Spirit, you are my counselor, my teacher, my guide. You know all that I need to do. Hi, why am I the only one in the house that's plagued by sickness when I'm the one who should be free of such things? Instantly, I remembered the conversation I had with my niece. I knew my words were being used against me in the courts of heaven because my words were being used to show that I hadn't truly forgiven my host and my husband. I was walking outside of the love of God. So this Bible verse came to mind, Matthew 12, 36. But I say to you that every idle word that men speak, they shall give account of therefore on the day of judgment. You see, the sickness didn't hit the first day, didn't hit till the next, till that next day. God's mercy is new every day. So is his judgment. I have a place as a leader in the body of Christ. My recounting of past wrongs had opened the door. Out loud, I began to confess that I had spoken ill of my host and my husband. I announced that I forgave all people that were involved with this issue. A picture appeared in my mind. Jesus was on the cross and blood streamed from his hands. Instantly, I knew the Holy Spirit wanted what he wanted me to say. said, Jesus, thank you for your blood that it blots out these sins. More pictures appeared. Each one showed me what to say next. I only declared what the Holy Spirit said to. And within 10 minutes, I felt fine, ready as rain. I was wanting to go to dinner with the family. So at that local pizza parlor, I started to feel queasy again. 
I excused myself so I could go to the bathroom where I prayed in the heavenly language. The healing scriptures came to mind, the ones I pray on certain mornings. And so I thanked God for all he had provided through his word. I thanked him for all that he had done for us. And the symptoms disappeared. I felt fine once again. It's interesting to note that my niece also then after that began suffering from a stomach sickness. You see, the enemy couldn't get at me and I didn't think to cover her in prayer for her part of it. And she threw up that night (laughs) all over the stairs. Only then did I remember, oh, I probably should have prayed for her too. Okay, so let's continue. (laughs) A couple of lessons to note here. Words said can be used as proof that we are really walking in unforgiveness still. So, and don't ever do anything but thank God for his word unless the Holy Spirit says otherwise. The enemy may come and test you once you receive relief. Turn back to the uh, the Holy Spirit. Follow his guidance. Quoting God's good promises may be necessary to overcome a certain attack. Not declaring and decreeing, but thanking God for who he is, that he is our healer. Thanking the Lord for all that he's done and trusting for him to take care of things. Now, because of this attack, the Lord revealed the highest place of authority in the courts. If you know about the courts and you understand them, you should begin to rest in what you know. Jesus is contending for you as your advocate. That's Isaiah 49, 25. The Holy Spirit is your earthly advocate, your counselor. That's John 14, 16. Your counselor, the Holy Spirit, will tell you what sins you need to confess in order to be free, and Jesus will contend for you. That is James 5, 16, 1 John 1, 9 through 10. Once you learn to hear from the Holy Spirit, then know that you are able to hear from your counselor on earth and that he knows what's being done in heaven. The highest level of operation with God for any Christian is to rest in this. Rest in knowing that Jesus is contending for you in the courts of heaven, that we only need to come when he calls, when he tells us to step in and after seeking counsel from the Holy Spirit. Jesus says in Matthew eleven twenty-eight, 28, come to me, all of you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Exodus 33, 14. And he said, my presence shall go with you and I will give you rest. The Lord wants to remove the burdens from you. It is our sincere desire that brothers and sisters in Christ will come to that highest level to learn to see and hear from their counselor, the Holy Spirit, both inside and outside of the courts. Now, there are more ways that the Holy Spirit can talk to you than just hearing things or seeing visions. Sometimes that doesn't come along for every person for a a while. Recently, the Lord has revealed that symptoms we experience at certain times may be interpreted with help from the Holy Spirit, so that we know what to do. Let me give you an example. There was a certain week when I experienced nosebleeds three times. The first one I was traveling, so I thought, oh, perhaps the air is dry by this gas stove. Then returning home, the blood began gushing out for no apparent reason. I shrugged it off thinking, oh, this could be connected to the one yesterday. (laughs) Maybe it's just finishing up. Well, when the next day I got another nosebleed, it finally occurred to me, maybe something's up. I laid down to sleep that night and the right side of my nose was completely clogged and it had so much sinus pressure that my eye hurt underneath, you know, it all along my, my right side. I knew it was time to seek the Holy Spirit. I began praying. Asking the Holy Spirit if there was an open door because I was feeling pretty afflicted at this time. He told me to look at the symptoms and interpret them. So I had three bloody noses on the left side. Well, always on the left. So the nose means discernment. Blood 
It's something that's leading to death, leading you down a wrong path, leading you into trouble. The left is of the spirit. Three means completion in the spirit. Now, a clogged nose on the right side means that the nose, of course, is discernment. Clogged means something's not flowing. I'm not flowing with the discernment I should be receiving from the Holy Spirit. Now, eye pain. I had eye pain and sinus pressure. Well, eye is seen. It's how you see. Pain means there's damage. So as I thought over all these items, the Holy Spirit reminded me of one other symptom I had been experiencing for over a month. During my weekly exercise, I had tweaked one of my knees, and it was my right knee. And it continued to hurt from that day onward. So your knee means prayer or submission to God. Pain is, of course, damaged, and this was on the right, so it's something I was doing in the physical world. It was secular, not spiritual. So when you put all these things together, a picture is painted that helped to guide me to the right direction. I had to go back to where it all began. So the knee pain began. What, what was I doing? Just like with Ashley, a matter of fact, now that I read hers too, <laughs> just like with Ashley, where did it all begin? And when did the bloody nose begin? There should be an event connecting these two, two events that are somehow connected if all of these symptoms are connected together. When I had begun working on the new revamped website for the academy, that was when I hurt my knee. The Holy Spirit reminded me that I had said something to the effect that the website was secular, so I didn't need to focus on the Lord. I could just, you know, do it while I catch up on tele a television show I hadn't watched in a while. You know, I was just, oh, this is just easy physical work. I can just do this on my own. Do you see a little bit of pride in that statement? It doesn't matter if it's reading your, the Bible and trying to get meaning from it, or if it's secular work, the Lord should be included. It's never about us and our abilities. The day I launched the website, that's when I had the first bloody nose. I had walked in to an attack of Leviathan because it comes, he comes with pride. That's why there were so many symptoms from many different directions. I needed to take time in prayer to fully submit to God. So it's pretty easy right there. You know, as I lay there trying to go to sleep, I began confessing that I took matter into matters into my own hands, that it was a pride. I was acting out in pride. I asked to be forgiven for stepping away from the Lord and taking it into my own hands. I renounced any words I spoke about the matter that were prideful. I accepted the blood of Jesus as payment and I pled the blood over the sins. Now, these may sound easy. But there's an additional temptation to pride when mistakes are made. Sometimes we begin thinking that we have messed up, messed up so much that our destiny with God has been ruined. By saying that, what we are saying is that our mistakes are more powerful than God. But it's also pride. It's a type of pride in your mistakes that they're bigger than God. The enemy may knock us down. But it's faith that picks us up and stands us back on our feet. And God can do all things through us if we will allow him. Now, over the last several months, I've spoken to a few people when they feel like they're under an attack. When they describe the different ways life has gone wrong, sometimes, not every time, but sometimes, it will show where an open door is. It'll give them a direction to look at. They have to spend time with the Holy Spirit to figure it out. Now, as I said, this is sometimes for symptoms. For this reason, the Holy Spirit has asked us to expand our dreams and visions meeting to interpret signs in people's life. The meeting will now just be called interpretation. Attending the meetings will help you learn about the Holy Spirit, how the Holy Spirit is speaking to us, what certain things mean. 
It's not like you have to write them down and memorize them. Just by coming and being exposed to it, then when something happens to you, the Holy Spirit can bring that back in a memory. You'll be like, oh, I think I remember. (laughs) And all of a sudden, you remember what that symptom means. So don't think that it's up to you to memorize things. You are just saying, Holy Spirit, I'm willing to learn how you're talking. And if you're talking, when you talk to me, I want to know, I want to hear it. So even if you're not under an attack, even if you don't have something for interpretation, you can come and listen. I'll also have a couple hours of a week available for private interpretation of symptoms in an attack. It'll be called interpretation. Be prepared to receive direction on where to look for the open door. We want you to hear from the Holy Spirit. We want to help you to be free. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you. I thank you for your word. I thank you that it is always accurate and true. I thank you for the gift of interpretation, which is really word of wisdom or word of knowledge from you, Holy Spirit. I thank you for helping the body of Christ. I thank you for helping them to understand how you are speaking. I thank you for showing them what is a what is against them in the courts of heaven. I place each one into your hands, Holy Spirit. Lead them and guide them. Teach them God's ways. Help them to take the next step towards their destiny. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, amen.